Wait, what? Lube now comes in these nice little glass jars? I've really been out of the game for a long time. What? You can buy these nicely pre-cut polycarbonate switch films for your switches? Does this mean I don't have to sticker the housings anymore? Man. There's a tool just for opening up switches? That is insane. The only tool back in the day was a binder clip. How does this thing work? Whoa. Mind blown. So this is the GK61. Let's see what these are all about. So this is the rage with the, all the kids these days. What is this hot swap thing? Back in the day, you got yourself a soldering iron. So you just plug it in like this? <gasps> what is this sorcery? How is this possible? How does one LED make all these different colors? Why did I spend all those hours soldering tiny little LEDs before? Man, a lot has changed. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. Whether you got back into the keyboard game after a hiatus, or just started new in the hobby, the GK61 has been a crowd favorite as the entry option to start with. It's a fairly straightforward plastic case tray mount 60% design that starts at a reasonable price and has great modding potential. Did I mention RGB? It definitely has that. And now, it even comes in Bluetooth. But as an entry keyboard, should this just be a stepping stone to nicer boards? Use it for a little bit and throw it away? What is the max potential of the GK61? Today, we're gonna find out. Let's get started. When you order the bare bones kit, you get a simple and clean looking keyboard with a white metal plate. The design is nice, nothing too crazy, but not too boring. It's not a heavy board by any means, but has a nice feel in the hand and doesn't feel too cheap or flimsy. I feel the plate material helps to contribute to the weight. Nowadays, there are so many versions to this keyboard with plastic, aluminum, even a wooden case version. Being a 60% layout, there are many plate options out there they could also try. Here's a good look at the switch sockets. It features north facing configuration with per key RGB and has standard kale hot swap sockets. The kit also comes with some plate mounted stabilizers, but they're just so so. What's very interesting about the GK61, especially this kit, is that it comes with the ability for you to use a standard 6.25U spacebar or swap out the module for this split spacebar configuration. And like other GK boards, it has a Skyloon logo on the back. The USB port is on the left side of the keyboard, but if you take a look here, it's very tight, so this is something to keep in mind for the mod in the future. So what does this thing sound like stock? So I have here some stock Gateron yellows with a PBT pudding cap to give you a quick uh, typing test. So the board sounds a little hollow and the keys are a little bit chattery. So what happens if you actually lube and film the switches, mount the stabilizers with some grease, and uh, throw some nicer PBT keycaps? Overall, it mellowed out the sound a little bit and got rid of the chatteriness, but the board is still pretty hollow and the overall typing feel is very stiff because of the tray mount configuration. One thing you notice is there's so many screws here. The silver screws are screws that actually made the plate to the PCB board and the black screws are the ones that are actually mounting the plate to the, the case. So a lot of connection points for this keyboard. So let's get into this keyboard. I am going to unscrew all the PCB board and plate screws first, all the silver ones, and let's see what it looks like when we get underneath this thing. 
Once you get all the silver ones off, do the same thing and get all the black ones out as well. And this will completely disassemble the plate from the case. Now, lift up and out the little plate module that holds the space bar stabilizer. Then, you could pry up the rest of the plate from the case. One trick is to gently twist the plastic tray, kind of like an ice cube tray, to loosen the plate. Then, the plate will lift up and out much easier. Now, you can lift up on the PCB and remove it from the tray. If you have a Bluetooth version, disconnect the power cable now from the battery as well. This is the Bluetooth version, so it has a small battery pack and a power cable. Overall, the case is pretty simple, with a lot of empty space. This is the reason for that overall hollow sound you heard during the typing test. Here is a better look at the PCB. The sockets are labeled nicely and has a similar look and feel to all the other GK boards. Another thing you can notice is just how many standoffs there are that connects the PCB to the plate. I think by now, everyone knows how I feel about too many hard connection points. We're definitely going to do something about this. Flip the board over and now you can see the standard KL hot swaps. The plate is a painted steel plate. It has nice heft and feels very similar to brass. I didn't really like the stock stab, so I wholly modded some Everglide Panda stabs instead. In order to cut down the reverb from the plate, I used some vinyl adhesive foam and created my own plate foam for the GK61. So I further modded the plate by adding some band-aid to the stabilizer cutouts to increase the overall tightness. Then I installed the wholly modded Everglide Pandas. As mentioned before, the lower tray is way too barren and has too much empty space. So we're going to fill this case to reduce the hollow sound, cut down the case reverb, and add some additional heft, and overall improve the acoustics of the GK61. I start by lining the bottom with Butyl Sound Detner, which gives the board a dense feel and sound. Then I use my trusty Zip and Fit liner to create a custom fit above to control any additional hollowness or reverb. Now we move on to the plate. Remember the standoffs I was talking about before? The GK61 PCB has a total of 6 standoffs built in. To improve the sound and feel over the alpha keys, I'm going to remove the two center standoff posts as shown here. The process is pretty simple. If you flip the board over, you can see small little nuts that hold the standoffs in place. Just need to loosen and remove these nuts to remove the standoffs above. Now the standoffs are gone and you got a nice smooth PCB surface. At this point, I did a quick test fit to ensure that the PCB board fits properly even with all the dampening applied below. This is where things get a little bit interesting. Remember when I mentioned that the USB cutout for this keyboard is super tight? For the next mod I'm going to do, I need to actually enlarge this height of this cutout. This is where the file comes into play. I use a precision file set for this purpose and shave away the plastic material. Overall, I shaved away about 1mm space on the top so even when the PCB is lifted up, the USB cutout has enough space to move up and allowing the PCB and plate to float. Ah yes, the moment you all have been waiting for. The O-rings are back. Remember these for the TOFU 65? Let's see what it does for the GK61. For this mod, we'll be using the smaller O-rings on the top between the screw and the plate and the larger O-rings on the bottom between the tray standoff and the plate. The GK61 has 7 total tray standoffs that the plate mounts to. Similar to the TOFU, we'll be using the O-rings on the outer 4 standoffs and leave the center 3 open like you see here. Instead of trying to do precision placing of the O-rings like this, the viewers recommended a smarter and an easier approach to installing the O-rings. What we're going to do is place the smaller O-ring onto the screw first, then feed the screw through the plate. Then you grab the larger O-ring and stick it through the bottom. This way, the screw and the O-rings are already in place and easier to lay on the tray. Repeat the process for all four outer mounting points, then place the prepared plate gently on the lower tray standoffs, making sure to align the screws into the hole. Now, use four silver screws to tighten the plate and the PCB together. Remember, we removed the center two PCB standoffs, so you'll only be tightening the four outer ones. Now, screw the plate to the lower tray with the O-ring mounted black screws. I used just a bit and my finger to prevent over tightening the O-ring. Intent is to burger mount the plate, so if you squish the O-ring way too much, then it defeats the purpose. Once all the screws are tightened, 
you can see that the enlarged USB cutout is working perfectly. The USB port has enough space without being stressed in any way or hindering the plate and PCB from floating. Now, time to put the switches back into the board and move on to the next step, the lower spacebar plate. Since we elevated the entire PCB and plate assembly using the O-ring, the lower spacebar plate will no longer be flush with the rest of the plate. In order to fix this issue and make sure that there's enough space between the PCB and the spacebar plate, we're going to adjust these standoffs higher. I noticed 6 to 7 or so full turns did the job pretty well. Now, make sure to test that everything fits, and if it doesn't, make some micro adjustments to ensure that it does. If you're satisfied with the fit, use the silver screws to tighten everything down. Now, the GK61 O-Ring mod is complete. This mod has such tremendous impact for the TOEFL 65, so let's see what kind of impact it has on the GK61 with a quick sound test. What do you think? You can really tell how stiff and hard the spacebar sounds since that portion is not elevated by the O-rings. Now, what if you wanted to upgrade your GK61 with some GMK keycaps and some Boba U4Ts? Let's check out how this sounds. And that's it. Let me know in the comments if you feel this GK61 with the O-Ring mod sounds as good as my TOEFL 65 with the O-Ring mod. The GK61 has been a great starter keyboard for many, and with the right mods, doesn't have to remain a starter keyboard. For a little more than $50, you get a great foundation to get into the keyboarding hobby and a platform to help you find what you like. With a fully programmable PCB and even Bluetooth, you realize why this little 60% is so popular. I hope this tutorial helps you achieve the max potential of your GK61. As usual, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I will have more content for you in the future. Thanks.